One day in January, I came home from the university and received the same as everyone else in my village, a letter from the mayor. At the moment when I held this letter inside my hands, I didn't actually know that this letter would change my life. The letter was about an information evening in the elementary school of our village. And all the people in Berndorf, the small village at the countryside in Salzburg where I'm living, were invited. When I opened the letter, I felt like very happy and excited and curious to get to know some people. Because this letter was about 35 refugees who will come to our village soon. So, being so honest, I must also say that I got a little bit nervous about the fact that refugees will come. But definitely not because of them. Much more because I was wondering how the people in my village would react. Every day, we can hear m so many bad things in media about villages not wanting refugees and about villages not getting along with refugees. So I thought, how can this be different in our village? So I was pretty nervous, but most of all, I was super looking forward to get to know these people. When we went to the information evening, we didn't realize that this evening, which had so much information and enlightenment in it, was the very first and most important point of the whole thing. To create a society together with refugees inside a village, which causes a positive new community inside the village. So, at this evening, some statements were of course also not in such a positive way. But what we know now is that these statements came out of fear because of unknowledge. And what really surprised me in a positive way, that the room was crowded and there were so many people who immediately wanted to help and asked how they can do that. One example is the baker. He said from the very beginning that he will provide our guests with bread while they stay. And the mayor immediately made a mail list for all those people who wanted to help and then met four days later. At the next day in the morning, our new guests arrived. And for the first time, I went to the place where I met 35 incredible men. The following months changed my life in a way I never knew before. But not only mine, as well the lives of our guests and the life of our whole village. And this happened in a very positive way. We learned that a community can really transform itself and that people together can get something really special out of little things. And it all started by just doing it, by just going to a place to say hello to some strangers and then by implementing little ideas, building a community together with refugees inside a village which is open and keen to get to know new and more people and really gets very good along with each other. So, as I already mentioned, information and enlightenment was the very first and most important step of the whole thing. Information and enlightenment are the only things that can build a fundament of appreciation and understanding. And information and enlightenment should be provided from an authority inside the community if refugees are coming and should happen before they come. I mean information such as why most of the refugees who arrive in Austria are young men? What about the women and children which are also in danger of their lives? Well, first of all, men are more politically pursued than women. But I think the very catching point about this topic is the chance the chance to survive the trip from the home countries of the refugees to a safe country like Austria is very low, especially for women and children or old people. But these men do not come to stay alone. Actually, they take this way at the firsts and they take the risk at the firsts. 
because as soon as they have asylum, they are able to bring their families in a legal, official and safe way to here. And this is why they take the risk at the first, to provide their families with a, sa with a safe way to come. Another important thing to know is that being a refugee doesn't come with being poor or low educated in the same way. Actually, the variety of socioeconomic backgrounds is huge. And many of the men I know know very good English, are studied and worked in high class before they had to flee. So, I want to give you an insight in some of the little ideas that implemented in our community, which made this thing something special. Nothing that we did was really planned. It was more like an organic way how little things start to be something really big, one step after the other. Including the community and giving the guests a sense of home, a sense of normality and social life can be so easy. Most of all, because there are so many people who want to do something and just don't exactly know how. So, if there are some people in your community, or at least one person from the very beginning, who has no doubts to go to these people, they can find ideas. And the whole village can find ideas together. One of our ideas was to put a basket with a list of needs to the local supermarket. And this had the very simple reason to provide our guests with food, because the budget as refugees is very low. And on this list there were simple things like vegetables, rice, noodles. And this gave everyone in our village the chance to help. Because everyone goes to the local supermarket. They see this list with things and they can help without even going there in person in the first way. And every day some of the men went to the supermarket to pick up this basket. And every day it was full. And this was so exciting because Sometimes it was even full two times, and it gave everyone the simple chance to help. Another thing that developed to be something very special is doing sports together. Sports is actually no matter of cultural language. Sports is just a matter of sharing the same passion. So we organized the demand can play football together with the boys of the football club, volleyball together with the volleyball club, or went running together. And this has many affecting points, because sharing the same passion and seeing that people, no matter from where they are, have the same passion, affects the community. Especially also because boys and girls then go home and tell their parents, neighbors, friends about it. And they say like, well, I did sports with the refugees, they are really cool, and this was super fun. And so it affects the whole community, and they get like curious to get to know them. So, step after step, little things started to become something bigger. One example is Sabine. She managed to come every day to the refugees to teach them the very basics of the German language. And actually, she was no professional German teacher. But she did it with such a passion. And she was the best person to do that. She was really awesome in doing that. She teach them the German language with, pa with passion, with fun. And she managed that some of the men were able to talk to us in German within only a few weeks. And so, it also developed that they started teaching us, for example, their language. One idea that we had to take away language as the first barrier was to draw. To draw the ways of the men from their home countries to Austria on posters. Pictures have a very simple statement. You don't need language to understand pictures. And this Posters made it simple and easy for people to understand, like how long the way was, and through how many countries they had to go, and how, by bus, by plane, on boats, 
on feet even through snow. As you can see, the ways are diverse. And every single per person has his own story for his way. So it is easier for the people to understand. And it is important for the people to understand. And this can be provided through pictures. So many things went so well. And actually, at the moment, we didn't know why our village has a very good experience with refugees and why other villages do not. Actually, it was so easy, and we thought that it would be very enriching for still more people to get to know our guests and for them to get to know more people. Because already, there were children from the kindergarten, teachers with their school classes coming to visit them. There were people in the same age, like many girls in my age, who visit them like every day, because we got really good friends. And there was also the priest, there was the mayor, there was all people who wanted to get to know something. There were so many people who took part in that. But even to include more people than already were included, there was the idea of an event, a multicultural evening which brings together different cultures. Some people of our village, together with the men, organized this multicultural evening. And I think, as we actually can already see on the picture, this evening couldn't have been more diverse. It went from Iraqi and Somali dances, over touching presentations from Damascus, Mehdi, who already had his presentation about Afghanistan in German, over Austrian Blasmusikanten, Schurchblattler, and in the end, all the people dancing waltz together. And really everyone that I mentioned before, and much more people took part in that. People from the university came. The people from our village came. The kindergarten children, the old people, the farmers after they finished their work. Everyone had the chance to take part and to share their cultures. Have you ever seen Semmelknödel written in Arabic? Actually, this shows how an event and how people who share their passions can create a positive, a positive room, a positive atmosphere where people can exchange their cultures with understanding and with passion. So everything that happened came out of our passions. And actually what we did itself was not world changing but it was life-changing for us in a very positive way. Because we together in a community, in a village, together with these 35 refugees managed to create a new community inside the village, which is really like we grow more together. And it was these 35 men who caused that. So if your community, if your village, will we'll get to know some refugees. And if your village gets some refugees, or already has some, why don't you be the first to go there? Why don't you be the first to say hello to a stranger? Why don't you, don't you take some of our little ideas to implement them? And why don't you find new ones and tell them to us? Actually, what I presented are just a few little ideas out of so many more things that happened and out of so many more ideas that other people have. And if we collect all these ideas, we can together create a toolbox for positive integration. We can together create win-win situations for the guests, for the refugees, and for the communities in which they are living in. When I came home at this day in January and held these letters in my hand, I didn't think that I can call men from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, Yemen, Kosovo, and many more countries, my friends. I didn't expect that some of them will be some of the best friends I ever had. But not only that, I also didn't expect that this man will cause a new community and new friends inside our village. 
So. Shukran Shesilen, alle Kulisheen, Dalem Tumkum. Thank you for everything that we learned from you. <laughs>